101 epoch, so it will calculate the appropriate learning rate, okay, instead of using a large learning rate to, to destroy your model, okay? So this is very important, okay? So for piecewise scheduling, again, you can create a model, I mean, a function, something like this, okay? And then, then use learning rate scheduler, callback, you know, which is similar to, to exponential scheduling, okay? So it's uh, pretty straightforward, okay? Um, and uh, uh, for performance scheduling, okay, there's a reduced LR on per two callback, okay, that you can use for the performance scheduling. And uh, if you want to use that, okay, then you create a LR scheduler, okay, callback object, okay, using this uh, reduced LR on per two, and uh, you need to specify your lambda value, okay? It's like uh, the, num the, the value, the, vac the factor you want to multiply the learning rate, okay? If the, you know, if your model does not, uh, the loss of the, the loss function does not reduce, gets reduced for five epochs for the patient's number of epochs, then you want to re multiply your learning rate by the factor, this factor. I mean, here it's like we reduce the learning rate by half. Okay, we reduce the learning rate to half, like uh, if uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the model does not, uh, the loss of the model does not reduce, I mean, for five epochs, okay, something like that. So this is, so, Lastly, okay, TF.Keras offers a third way to implement learning rate scheduling, okay, which is called like a, a you know, Keras dump optimizers that schedules, okay. Um, so we can pass the learning rate to any optimizer, okay. So this approach updates the learning rate at each step rather than at each epoch, okay. So here is the uh, one the example to implement the same exponential schedule using uh, as the exponential decay function, okay? And we defined earlier. So this is uh, first like, uh, um, we, the number of steps, uh, uh, you know, in 20 epochs, okay, the batch size is 32, so S is 20, okay? And uh, then, okay, learning rate equal to chaos star optimizers, star schedule. We, you know, see, we, we can have, directly call exponential decay, okay? They already define this function for you, okay? And you specify, like, uh, your S value, you specify, like, uh, you know, the, um, um, the initial learning rate, eta zero, and uh, this is like, uh, you know, because every S step you want to, you know, reduce uh, by 10 times, right? You can even reduce, like, uh, this, this means here, you, you can control, like, how many, how many times uh, the learning rate you want to reduce, okay? So you pass all these hyperparameters, and then you just pass this learning rate object to the optimizer, and that's it. So this approach, the advantage of this approach is that, okay, um, when you save the model, the learning rate and its schedule, okay, including the state, gets saved as well. So you don't need to worry about those, uh, you know, the, the initial epoch thing, okay? So, so this is nice. But uh, however, this approach, okay, is not part of Keras API. It is defined by TF Keras, okay? So only TensorFlow Keras has that, okay? So as for the one cycle approach implementation, uh, is well similar to actually it's kind of similar to the previous ones that we talked about like uh, uh, for example like uh, the, the piecewise or like uh, uh, exponential okay you just define uh, a, a, a function and then create a custom callback okay and uh, um, you know there's a one cycle scheduling section of the notebook okay uh, that is provided by the textbook that you can check out, okay? So to sum up, 
exponential decay, performance scheduling, and one cycle can considerably speed up convergence. Okay, but uh, for me, okay, if I were the one to make suggestion, okay, the one cycle scheduling is kind of complicated. Okay, exponential uh, decay is perhaps the easiest one. Uh, well, these two are pretty easy, exponential and the performance. But the uh, exponential scheduling has uh, has advantage in terms of like convergence speed. Okay. So um, then uh, we need to talk about like uh, techniques to avoid overfitting. Okay, and uh, uh, obviously, okay, um, we could use we we have talked about several techniques to avoid overfitting already. Okay, we know it. Uh, deep learning. Okay, the the neural network has so many parameters and uh, it's easy to overfit. The model is easy to overfit. Okay, so so we we have talked about, for example, early stopping. We have talked about batch normalization. We have talked about uh, uh, you know um, you know I mean this 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 thing. Even though they they may originally design for different purpose, but they are also pretty good regularizer. Okay, so um, in the previous chapter we already talked about L1, L2, right? But uh, in deep learning, how do we use this L1, L2? Here, okay. Basically, okay. Um, just like if you did for a single simple linear model, you can use L2 regularization to constrain neural networks, connection weights, okay? So it is done in a layer basis, okay? So for example, here, okay, you create a dense layer, right? With 100 neuron, with and the EOU activation function, and the, the in kernel initializer to be he normal. And the here, okay, you can specify kernel regularizer to be Keras start regularizers L2, and you can specify uh, whatever like uh, um, constraint, okay, you want to put it here, okay. Uh, so you can see this is done by layer based, I mean, uh, each, I mean, layer by layer, okay. So L2 function returns a regularizer that will be called at each step during training to compute a regularization loss. So uh, you can obviously also use uh, Keras regularizer uh, L1 as well, okay? I mean, if you want the sparser model, okay, you want to use L1 as we already mentioned earlier. There's a even a Keras regularizers L1, L2, okay, which basically like, uh, you know, apply both L1 and L2 regularization, okay? But you need to specify both regularization factor, obviously, because you no know, one for each, basically, okay? So, if you want to apply the, for example, uh, the same uh, L, L2 regularization for every layer, uh, you could obviously do this for every, I mean, for every uh, layer, when you create every layer, okay? But uh, uh, we people in computer science, we don't want to, you know, to write like a duplicate code, right? And, uh, sometimes we feel like it looks ugly, right? So, so we can use, uh, you know, to avoid doing that, okay, we can use Python's func tools, partial, okay? So we can define, okay, this uh, regularized dense partial, equal to partial, okay? And uh, here we pro just provide, okay? Oh, this is what function? Keras star layer star dense. And the inside this function, okay, what, uh, in, um, you know, uh, default, um, you know, uh, parameters we want to provide, such as activation, we want it to be real, uh, EOU, uh, the kernel initializer, we want it to be he normal. For kernel regularizer to be L2, okay? And once you define this by func tool, okay, when you create the model, you know, you just, uh, other than the fa I mean flatten, okay, layer, okay, 
you can see we just call regularized dense and it provides 300 as like a number of uh, uh, neurons. That's it. And regularized dense 100. Okay, that here you, you see we don't need to you know repeat a lot of these statements again and again here. And then for the output layer, we can even use regularized dense 10. But obviously, the, because this is the output layer and we want to do like a classification, right? So the activation is going to be softmax. But uh, you can override this uh, uh, default value, okay, by providing your activation here. And the kernel initializer to be growth uniform, okay, which override the original default uh, initialize, I mean, the her normal as well, okay? So, so this is just like uh, the fun tool. This is really not deep learning, okay? This is actually Python, okay? This is actually Python. Okay, so I think like, uh, um, yeah, it's a, we have only one minute, but uh, it's not uh, enough for me to cover this dropout. Okay, so I, I think I'll stop uh, the lecture today here, okay? So next time we'll start from the dropout. Okay, hopefully like, um, how many? We still have about uh, how many? Yeah, about 20 slides. So hopefully next time we will be able to cut, finish this chapter and then start the CNN chapter, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, for the, remember I, I told you guys that the due date of uh, project two has been extended for one more week, okay? Because like uh, if, if your partner happened to drop out of the class, please notify TA immediately, okay? Uh, and we would like to give you some time to to work, I mean, additional time to work on the project too, okay, in case your partner drop out of class, okay. So, any question? Uh, 